Okay, today we want to talk about PhD Win software and how you use it to evaluate reserves. My name is Kurt Meir. I'm a petroleum engineer, uh, 35 years of experience in reservoir and production engineering. For the last 20 years, I've concentrated on reservoir engineering, uh, reserve evaluation, property evaluation, and uh, on properties all over the country and, and several foreign countries. I'm the principal engineer from Mir Petroleum Consultants, uh, based here in Houston. We started the company in 2005, and we mainly do uh, property evaluations, our SEC reserve reports and acquisition evaluations, that sort of thing, for, mostly for smaller operators or investors. But we have done some work for larger companies like BP and Mitsui and Yates Petroleum. Okay, today's agenda will include uh, what are reserves and why are they important. And then we'll quickly go through the steps that you need to perform to evaluate reserves using PhD Wind software. And then we will go into a little bit detail on one of the steps, which is well ownership. And we will go over a few examples of decline curve analysis techniques and uh, tips in PhD Win. I'll say, okay, what are reserves? Well, everybody knows they're just the volumes of oil and gas that are left to be produced. They could be proved, probable, possible. And to estimate these, we can use decline curve analysis for producing wells, and we can do that in PhD Win. But we also can do volumetric calculations, material balance analysis, simulation, and and analogy in some, some cases. So that's how you get the volumes of oil and gas. But part two is more is real important. It's the estimated value of the reserves. So how do we come up with a value? Because that's part of the reserve evaluation is the value. And we use the future cash flow technique or economics analysis and PhD Win is the software tool we use it for this. We use discounted cash flows. And PhD Win uses the term PW or present worth. But other uh, standards include net present value or present value PV. Some people call those interchangeably and we can have different discount rates. So that's how we evaluate it. Most of the time we use a discounted cash flow, but there are other methods to evaluate reserve values. So for example, if we know that in a certain area where we have a feel that other companies have sold their reserves for so many dollars per barrel of oil in the ground reserves, we can come up with an average value like that. Sometime companies uh, announce a sale of a property and they tell the purchase price and the amount of production they sold so you would know how much they paid per barrel of oil per day and then sometime in the share plays people will say well we just sold our thousand acres for 10 million dollars so that will be announced publicly you know sometimes or through trade journals and so we can come up with a value knowing dollars per acre so we can use these other methods to value reserves, but the main one and the one we're going to talk about today is the future cash flow discounted cash flow method. And that's what we use PhD Win software for. So why are reserves important? Well, a lot of times you have regulatory compliance with the government. So in the United States, we have the SEC and it requires that all publicly traded oil companies have to report reserve volumes and value once a year. In other countries, there could be other regulatory bodies or government agencies that want you to report that. But we can also use reserve reports for internal tracking. It's very important because we can track our reserves each year. If we do, a, if we do an evaluation each year, we can see all the reserves going up, are they going down, what's the health of our company. And then external reporting. Sometimes you have partners or stockholders, even in private companies, and you want to report your reserves to them so they can see how the company's doing and how their investment's doing. 
And then if you're going to divest some of your properties, of course, you might want to do a, a reserve evaluation to see what the value of the field is or the reserves before you accept any offers. And then for acquisitions, we would do a reserve evaluation to come up with a value of the reserves before we buy them. And then we also can use reserve evaluations for budgeting and planning because the reserve evaluation has schedules out how the reserves are going to be produced over time. And so you can, you can predict what the revenue is going to be over time when you sell those reserves. So that it helps you know how much revenue your company is going to have for planning. And then if you have drilling prospects in your reserve report, you have to schedule them into the cash flows. And so when you run your cash flow report, it will show you how much capital you need each year for your drilling. So that helps you budget. And also, sometimes we just have one well that we're going to drill or a recompletion project that we want to evaluate the reserves and cash flow to get the project economics, to make sure it's economical project and it compares favorably to other projects we could spend our money on. So there's a lot of important reasons why you need a good reserve evaluation or reserve report. All right, so I'm going to go over briefly the basic steps that you need to go through to evaluate reserves. So the first thing you have to do is you have to create a PhD Win database. You either can create a new one or copy an old one. And you have to set your default parameters, such as the as of date, that's very important, your discount rates. You can have a model file that has your price schedules and your operating expense schedules, if you want to use that. And you can set your maximum economic life. Sometimes we limit reserves to 50 years, but you can set that up when you start a new project. Also, in PhD when we can use archives, so we can set those up when we start the project. Archives are used to store uh, reserve projections on each well. You could have, maybe you could have a different archives for each well, you know, like a high case and a low case. So you can use archives for that. And you set that up when you create a new database. Most reserve reports include producing wells. So the next step would be to load the production data or you producing wells into PhD Win, So you can either do that using commercial uh, data that can be loaded in bulk, bulk uh, methods, or you can, you can come up with techniques to bulk load Excel spreadsheets in, or you can manually type it in. But you have to, um, you have to have production data into your database. And then you have to apply ownership, the well ownership for every well in every case in your database. You have to create and apply a price schedule because you're going to do a future cash flow. We have to know what the price of oil is going to be in the future or our best estimate. So you have to create a schedule and apply that to all your wells. Then you have to analyze the price differentials. That's, that's the difference in the price you're receiving from your sell, sales of the oil based compared to the market price. And, and you have to look at the NGL yields and gas shrinkage, and you have to apply all this to your cases in PhD Win, so we can get the correct cash flow when we run our reserve estimates. Then for the producing wells, we have to make decline curve projections, and we can do this using the PhD Win software. Next thing is we have to determine operating expenses. We have to estimate them or analyze historical data, and we have to apply that to all your cases in PhD Win. And if you have recompletion or workover uh, potential, you have to evaluate the reserves and the capital needed and the timing to uh, do those recompletions. And then you have to build those cases in PhD Win with that information. Likewise, if you have drilling prospects that you're going to be drilling, you have to evaluate the volume of reserves, the timing of the drilling, you know, the rate profile that the well is going to come in on. Is it going to come in at a thousand barrels a day? Uh, what's the capital drilling complete cost facilities? And you can, you have to schedule all that into your PhD win cases. So that's how you build your database. 
And then once you get it built, you can generate the reserve reports or cash flow report is very important. It shows your annual cash flow. And you can also, one we like to use is a one line report, which gives one line of information about each well. So you can compare them easily by looking at the one line of report. So these are the, these are the basic steps that you have to go through to evaluate and project reserves in PhD win. But we're going to go into a little bit of detail on well ownership because a lot of reservoir engineers were tied up in the technical analysis, the reservoir simulation maybe, and we lose sight of how the well is owned because maybe our client or our company does not own 100% of the well and it, or it has a high royalty burden. So you have to understand how that's determined and, it has, and how the economics are affected by that. So we'll go in, over an example of that. And we'll go over a few examples of uh, decline curve projections uh, for producing wells, some tips on those, and uh, maybe one technique on how you can speed that up. All right, so just to reiterate, all PhD win cases have to have ownership data. Producing wells, shut-in wells, because shut-in wells could have P&A liability that you have to model in. Recompletion cases, proposed drilling, all of them have to have ownership. And it has to be the ownership that you're evaluating. Are you evaluating for your client or another client or a different company that owns different shares of the wells? All right, so the three th things that PhD Win needs, and you have to understand is working interest, revenue interest, and lease net revenue. So working interest is the share of the well that you or your company or your client is paying for. You're gonna pay 50% of the drilling costs are in 50% of the operating expense. So that would be your working interest. The revenue interest is what share of the revenue will you receive or your client will receive when the oil and gas is sold, because that could be different than the working interest. And most of the time it is different. Now the next thing that we have to have for PhD win is the lease net revenue. So the lease net revenue is the fraction of the revenue th that goes to the working interest partners after the royalties and overriding royalties are paid. All right, so let's understand how these factors are related mathematically. So most of the time, not all the time, but the net revenue interest is just the revenue interest divided by the working interest. For example, if our well is 60% working interest and 45% revenue interest, we can calculate the net revenue by just dividing them. So for this well, the net revenue is 0.75. And we always use, always use fractions. I will quote percentages, but everything is fractions when you analyze it in PhD Win. Or another way to understand it, if we, if we know the working interest of a well and we know the lease net revenue because we know the royalties, we can figure out what our royalty interest in the well is by multiplying these factors out. So this is just an example of how the math relates to the factors. And it's, all, it's good to understand. All right, so when we, we're using PhD Win, we have a case editor that allows us to input the working interest, uh, the ownership data. So here's a little screenshot. So let's, let's go to PhD Win and, and show an example of how you do that. Okay, so we have an existing database that we're going to open up. Now, uh, the way I like to uh, do my reserves is I like to have th uh, three windows open. I have a production graph window, a case list window that has all the wells in it, all your project, and then a case editor here at the bottom. So the, the graph on the left is for the well that's highlighted here in green on your case editor. I mean, on your case list. And then your case editor is showing all the information for this well in green. If you change to another well, then the graph and the case editor change. So anyway, the case editor is, is where we uh, that's the, uh, uh, edit the uh, ownership. So we have all kind of information, monthly volume on that well, expenses, and then we go to ownership. All right, so we have working interest, Revenue interest, lease net revenue, and net profits. 
Net profits is very seldom used. It's a little bit different than working interest and I've never used it. But anyway, I, so anyway, we're gonna concentrate on these three type uh, things. So here's our well. We have 100% working interest. If you wanna change it, we just double click. So if we know this well, we're only on 50%, so you can put 0.5. We know the least net revenue is 0.875 because we have a 12.5% Rawley. So to get the revenue interest, we can press this little calculator and it'll calculate it. So it's now it changed, it reduced it by 50%. So you can save that. And then if you refresh your screen here, let's see, it's going to say, you say save it. Now you can see right here. Okay, that has changed. All right, so on our sort order, here's our sort order in our case list. We have a working sort order. You can set up different sort orders. And in the sort order, we have the working interest and revenue interest listed. So that's, that's right here, these numbers. So we can quickly go through, and we know that's at 100%, 75%. We can quickly go through and see you know, what the ownership is for our wells. So if we have a spreadsheet with the ownership, we can paste it in here for each well if each well is different. Okay, so another way to edit this is use Excel. Edit data in Excel. You put your case list here that you want to edit. You can select different ones, but right now we're going to use all the 172 cases. And we pick ownership. And we say edit. Okay, so here's, here's our ownership data. Like I said, we don't use net profits very seldom. But if we have a spreadsheet, from the client that has the ownership of all these different wells, we can just paste it in here, or we can change this. Uh, or you can change it and, you know, copy and paste, you know, if you know it. Okay. So you can quickly in Excel change it, and then you say pull the data back in. Okay, so that's how we edit and change and input uh, ownership data in PhDWIN. Okay, so let's go back to our presentation. All right, so let's understand, let's take a little time to understand how ownership is determined. And here's a little example. So this is a land map showing two sections of land and a proposed drilling well in green. Now, everything I'm going to talk about in the next few minutes is based on surface area participation. So keep that in mind. And this is a common and way to look at ownership. So basically, whoever owns the land over the well is going to own the well. So if you own 50% of the land that the well is going to drain, you're going to get 50% of the uh, working interest. Okay, so let's just go over, let's, this is a good detailed example. So, all right, so we have two sections of land here, uh, 640 acres and 640 acres. And we have a proposed horizontal well in green and a red outline of the drilling unit that was established by the state regulatory body. It's 640 acres. So it's the bottom south half of the two sections. All right, so on the western side, the Smith family owns this half section of 320 acres, and they've leased it to BP with a 1 8 royalty rate. The Alvarez family owns this land right here, and they've leased it to Exxon, but they got a higher royalty of 3 16 so they, they have a different royalty. Over here, the land is divided into different ways, so we have an Adams family owns 160 acres here to the north. And they've leased it to XYZ Oil Company for a one-eighth royalty. And the Mir family owns this 180 acres. Now, in the United States, we have private ownership of minerals. So the land, the families of the landowners will own the minerals in most cases underneath the land. All right, so right here we have the Lopez family. Now, they have an irregular-shaped piece of land that has about... 280 acres, and they've leased it to the operator. The operator is the TDC oil, and the Lope, and it's the Lopez number one H well is proposed. So the uh, Lopez family leased out this acreage at one eighth royalty to 
to TDC Oil. But the Jones family owns this small section of 40 acres here. And they've also leased it to TDC Oil, but they got a better royalty rate. They got 3 16 So that's a, just an example of a proposed well. So who would own this well once it's drilled? Let's see how you figure that out. All right, so here's a little tabulation of all the landowners. Let's look at the landowners and mineral owners first. So here are the families. Here's the total amount of land that they own and own the mineral rights to. That's two sections, 1280. But the unit is only 160 acres. So how much land do they have in the unit? So the Smith family only has half of their land in the unit. So what share of the unit would they have? So you just take 160 divided by 640 and that's 0.25. And their royalty rate is a 1 8 royalty down here at the bottom, which is equal to 0.125. So you just multiply 0.25 times 125, 0.125. And you get the revenue interest that the Smith family will get on that well. And then the Alvarez, Lopez, and Jones, a similar calculation. So this is what, how the landowners are going to be involved in the well. So let's, go, let's look at the working interest owners, the oil companies. Okay, so here's the working interest owners. So we have TDC Oil, BP, Exxon, and XYZ. Now, TDC Oil has two leases, so we separate them out. So we have the jo Lopez lease and the Jones lease. They have different acreages with different, uh, with different lease revenues because they have different royalties. Okay, so what share, working interest share would the oil company have? So 280 divided by 640 is 0.4375, and 40 divided by 640 is 0.062. So for Lopez, I mean for TDC Oil, you have to you have to add up these two. So they're going to have a fifty percent working interest in the well, and their revenue interest is going to be 0.43. Now BP, they leased one hundred and sixty acres in the unit, and so that's a quarter of the six forty. Their lease uh, net revenue was 0.875, so BP's revenue is going to be 0.21, and then Exxon is a little different. Now, XYZ company leased the land to the north. They don't have anything, so they're out of the well. So this is the working interest. So let's kind of summarize how it all gets divided up. Let's look at the next thing. Oh, so if, if BP is your client, when you model this in pasty win, you have to use these numbers. So it depends on who you oil company that you're working for or your client. So you have to know these numbers. So let's look at how it all adds up. So here's the summary. Here's the families that own the land, and here's the oil companies. So working interest, remember that's the amount of the well you're gonna pay for. Well, the landowners have a royalty, they don't pay for the well, so it's zero. But TDC Oil is gonna pay for half the well, BP and Exxon are gonna pay for a quarter each. That has to add up to 1.0. Now let's look at the revenue interest. This shows who's gonna get the money when you sell the oil. So the Smith family is going to get their royalty in the form of a revenue interest of 3%. And then the other, land, other landowners get this share, and then your oil companies get this share of the revenue. So it adds up to 100. So that's how you divide up the ownership of a well based on surface acreage participation. All right, so, okay, how, what's some other sources of uh, uh, ownership data. So sometimes you're working for a client and they have check stubs showing their share of the well. So it might look like this, and this is a monthly statement of revenues and operating LOE or lease operating expense. So it gives you a lot of information, but if you look right here, the working interest on this well, the Drake 129 is 36%. So that would be the working interest for this well. So that would be a way to get the information. Sometimes you have division orders. So like here's an example of a division order and my client was an overriding royalty interest owner. So the division order is where they tell everybody, the oil company tells everybody what share of the well they're going to get and they issue this to all the partners. But in this case, my client had a very small overriding royalty interest, O-R-R-I, and that's similar to a revenue interest. So it's the same thing as revenue interest. So when I evaluated this well, I had to use this data in my PhD wind file. All right, here's another example of a, of a uh, division order. 
on a, on the cider number one a one eleven H. And again, it shows the ownership, revenue interest. So sometimes the gas and oil can have different. So they could be different. In this case, they're both the same. But this is a very small overriding royalty interest that my client owned in this well. All right. So the next thing I wanted to go to is uh, looking at how you do decline curve analysis. Here's a sample decline curve analysis of PhD win. So let's switch to PhD win. All right. So let's look at some wells and some examples okay so we got all the wells here i picked out one beforehand okay so i'm gonna pick out this mccallum hand number 5h now you can you can list reservoir engineer the reservoir here and we know that's an eagleford well here's the production data here's the monthly volumes we have data through june of this year now we use monthly production data to do decline analysis. We never use daily if we can avoid it. So right here, this well is shows the monthly oil production. So we always use monthly production to do our decline curve analysis. It's green is oil, red is gas, blue is water. Now, I use monthly data, but I like to display my graphs using barrels a day so I double click and I change it here but basically what PhD wind does is it just takes the monthly volumes and divides them by 30 and so that's okay unless the operator of the well is reporting per, uh, amount of days on production so sometimes if the well is on production for 20 days some states require the operator to report that 20 days. So if you have that information in Texas, that is not a problem. So I don't have to worry about it. If you have that information, PhD wind will divide the monthly volumes by 20 and that will distort your graph. So you just have to realize that you don't want to use daily plots. If the operator is reporting daily, uh, the amount of days on production during the month, but you can delete the days on production if you want. Uh, it's easy to do but anyway all right I like to use uh, daily because I, I like I can relate to a 10 barrel a day well right here or a five barrel a day well more than you know monthly volume but you can use monthly volumes if you want all right so you first thing you do is you uh, you notice that this is a hyperbolic decline because it's a shale well and it's we have a semi log plot here's your rates oil and gas rates on the left and your time on the linear scale here. So you have a semi-log. This is the way we use, we use semi-log analysis to do decline curve analysis. So if the well is not, if the well has a curving shape like here, that means it's uh, gonna be a hyperbolic decline and shale wells exhibit hyperbolic declines. So we, uh, let's go ahead and let's try to do uh, estimated projection on here. So you click on there and you click on your ARPS button. And it's going to pop up with gas because this is a gas well in red. If you want to, if you want to uh, project the oil, you have to switch to here, or or you can use here, or you can touch the numbers here. All right, so we want to go ahead and uh, project the gas. Now, we can see it's hyperbolic. Let's go ahead and hit the plus sign, and we can uh, we can fit a curve here if we want. And we have to put a hyperbolic B factor that that describes the curvature of the well. And we have to experiment. I don't do manual fitting. I do. I mean, I don't do auto fitting. I use manual fitting for all my wells. And you have to use experience in the area to know the B factors. But anyway, you can kind of get a B factor that fits here. And you always have to remember to put a D minimum. That's that's the minimum decline rate that when the well gets to that decline rate, it will go exponential and not the decline rate won't change. Hyperbolic means the decline rate changes over time and gets less. Okay, so that could be a, a reserve projection for the, for the gas. And then we click on here to get the oil. Let's go ahead and do an oil. Now, 
sometimes if I have a long life, well, I don't try to fit the curve through the whole thing because I'm going to have to use a high B factor. The B factors generally start getting less over time. So I try to honor the more later data, the more recent data when I do my curve. Now, I will put a B factor, but I will not use this quite as high as the uh, gas because that's over the whole life of the well. So I'm going to use my judgment. I'm going to use a 0.5. Again, you use... You have to have a D minimum. I use eight for most shale plays to be, you know, that's a good conservative number. The lower you put that D minimum, the more the reserve will be. But it doesn't affect the value that much because it's way out in time before the well becomes uh, exponential. All right, so here's an example of how we can do it. Uh, and what we do is, because gas is the primary product, we'll go ahead and project it all the way out to like an economic limit. We just put like out to 2065 and for the oil we click this little button right here and that'll make sure the oil goes all the way out to the it's the secondary product and it will go all the way out to the to the gas okay so that's our reserve projection for that well we can save it and that's our default projection you can have multiple projections if you want you can have a high low and medium okay so that's a hyperbolic decline. Let's look at, uh, let's go ahead and look at a exponential decline. So here's a South Louisiana well, oil, gas, and water, semi-log plot again. But you can see it's mostly a straight line on, on the exponential, on the uh, semi-log plot. So this would be more conducive of a high permeability reservoir that declines exponentially at a constant decline rate. So you can kind of look right here that in this part of the life, the well was, this is the oil, was produced, it was declining at about 14.6. So all your parameters on this little ARPS button, you can manually change them or you can move the graph, move it here. All right, so like I noticed, we always honor the more recent data. So like this is the more recent data. So I'm gonna fit my curve through the more recent data and even though this curve does seem to have a little, little curve to it, I know it's going to, it's South Louisiana high perm. I'm going to use the high exponential decline, which is a straight line on a semi -log. That means the B factor is zero for an exponential decline. And so you don't need a D minimum or B factor. Okay, so here's, here's my oil decline that I'm going to project for this producing well. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the gas, click on the red numbers there. Hit gas, and uh, this one doesn't really have a good trend, but it's not a high volume of gas. You can look here, you can look here, kind of see what the trend was. And I'm going to just, okay, so I got a 5% decline. The oil well has a 5% decline. Hey, that's pretty close. That's about the best I can do. I might maybe go a little more optimistic, and then I just hit the end point. Now it goes to the end. Let me go back to the oil and go ahead and project that on out to several years. I can just change the ending date. All right, so that you can save that. Okay, so that's an example of manually doing declines. As you can see, this project, we have 172 wells. There's some Austin chalk, and there's a 80, 68 Eagleford wells. Now, if you have 1,000 Eagleford wells to do, that would take a long time to do manual projections. So sometimes we use a little shortcut, and I'm gonna show you this technique. And uh, one of the engineers that works for me, uh, James Moomaw, he came up with this technique and I like it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make like a little type curve for these Eagleford wells, because we're gonna have to do each one manually. It's gonna take too long. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the PhD wind function, the normalized graph function. So that's file, import data, or create new cases. We're going to do a single case and we're going to do a normalized curve. That's what, B, that's what PhD Wind calls a type curve. So we're just going to go ahead and put a name. Eagle Ford type curve. And we know these are all wells and they're in Texas. You can put some information if you want. You can right there. Okay, so we'll go ahead and press finish. This is onshore well. Okay. All right, we're going to press finish. Okay, so then we're gonna get another screen and we're gonna go ahead and select the end of production. We don't really have any economic projections on these wells anyway, so it doesn't matter, but I always use end of production because I don't wanna use any projected 
volumes. I'm going to just use. Okay, so we've uh, selected our Eagleford wells to make our normalized curve. Here's the list of wells. We have 68 of the Eagleford wells selected. So we'll go ahead and create and compile. And we get our normalized curve for the 68 Eagleford wells that we're going to use. All right, so the next step would be to add, double click on the graph and add products. We'll go ahead and put well count in there. We don't need water, so we overwrote the water. Okay, here's your well count, but it's hard to see, so let's go editor, product tree, and go to well count and make that a little thicker so we can see it. So I'm going to show you what that's about. Okay. All right, so here's our well count. Here's our historical data. I'm going to double click and I'm going to give me a, a few more years of data. Okay. So all this is is PhDWin takes all the wells that you use, the 68 Eagleford, and it averages them all up together at time zero. So you can go in here to the monthly volume and you can look at the volumes. And you can see that we have 68 wells in the sample. But as the young, as the newer wells drop out of the sample, the well count goes down. So when the well count gets too low, that's not representative of the sample of well. So we want to delete, we want to delete the production after the year 06. So what you do is, uh, and you can, you can pick that point when the well count gets down to 50%. So if you had 68 when you got to 34, that kind of be the end of it. So that I'm going to say, uh, 08, the year 08 or 07. So let's just go end date and we're going to say 12-31-1907. PhD Win uses 1900 as the first year. So you say, okay. And basically it's going to warn us that we're cutting off some of the production, but that's what we want to do. So anyway, so we kind of cut off the production when the well count was too low, so it wouldn't be a representative average. All right, so here's our type curve for Eagleford Well in the area. So what we're going to do is we're going to go get on our graph, do arcs, and we're going to go ahead and put a a little curve through there to fit, you know, the average well in the area. Okay, and you put a B factor that fits. So we might want to go over to like 0.7. So that's a pretty good fit. And remember, always put the D minimum of eight. I'm going to make this a little shorter because I'll show you that later. Okay, now we're going to click on the green to get oil, and we're going to we're going to go ahead and fit an oil curve here. And uh, we can zoom in like that. Double click goes back, and then you want to kind of fit a curve. I'm going to use a 0.65 and see how that fits. We changed the final rate to 10 just so I can grab the data and manipulate it. So that's how you do that. Okay, so that's almost there. So I think we need a little bit higher B factor to fit the data. All right. And we want to put our D minimum of 8, and we'll go ahead and lock it, lock it to the gas. All right, so that's, we we'll save that. So what that is, is that's an average eagle for decline profile for the area. And we're going to use this to help speed up the producing wells that we have to decline. Okay, so the next step is to make a copy of this. So you have to close the ARPS window like I just did, and you press copy. And you projections, and you don't need the monthly data. You turn off monthly data. So you make a, make a copy of the Eagleford. Okay, so here's our type curve, but it's in the year 1901. So that's not going to work. So we're going to we're going to go back to our ARPS menu and we're going to change this to like 2-1-2018. So that's good. So that's going to shift the line out there. And then we're going to do the oil. That was the gas. Now we're going to do the oil 2-1-2000. Okay. So now it's moved it over to modern times. Double click, press auto. All right. So now we have the year 2000 and... 18 on. Okay, so we have a little curve here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make this curve a little bit shorter before I apply it. So, okay, so uh, okay, so that's perfect. Now let's let's do 120. I just want a shorter 
curve because it's easy to handle when I use it. Okay, so what we do is we now we have a little representative shape and what we're going to do is we're going to use the case profile up here to the top and we're going to add this case profile in as an Eagleford and you have to put a name and I'm going to call it Eagleford PDP PD, P, PDP. So now it's in my list. Here's some other type curves that I've saved for other projects. All right, so now we have, uh, we've saved this case profile. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply this case profile to our Eagleford share wells now. So we're going to go editor, global editor. And then we're going to, uh, we're going to just apply it to the, uh, Eager for share wells. It's historical. So you go to case selection and you. Okay, we're going to use the global editor and we're going to select all the <clears throat> Eagerford wells in, in our case selection window here. Then we're going to go to uh, case profile at the bottom and we're going to say definitions plus projections, apply case profile, and then we're going to select our Eagerford PDP and then we're going to apply that. Okay, so now we have a we have a starting point for our declines on every well now. So what you do is you start on the first well you have to make the decline on, open up your ARPS window, and then you just fit the curve there like that. Then you do the oil. And so the shape and the and the and the D minimums are already there. Go ahead and extend out your your final rate, maybe out, out a little further. Okay, you can save that. All right, so that goes that one. And then, so basically, it gives you a little starting point curve to do your declines because you put that case profile on there. So you don't have to type in the B factor and the D minimum and all. It's just set up ready to go. So you do that. And we could do a few of them. So that little trick really speeds it up when you have a lot of wells to manually do projections on. And if you don't think the B factor fits, you know, the specific well, you can change it a little bit. But it's just faster overall to use this technique if you have a lot of wells to do. Go on and extend it out. All right, so that's that's a little trick to speed up decline curves by using a little normalized curve. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation. All right, so that's about all I had. I hope it gives you just an idea of uh, using PhD win and how easy it is to use and you can generate reserve reports. Uh, but I do want to show you these other uh, YouTube videos, which I have a four part series that goes into more detail on all the steps. So if you search YouTube creating reserve reports with PhD win, it will come up. Anyway, so those will give you more uh, information if you want to study it further. But I hope this was helpful to show some of the steps and the ease of using PhD when to generate reserve reports. Thanks.